Hey everyone, I'm gonna show you what this is and what we call it and why we designed it. But first I'm gonna take you on a little bit of a journey where we are going to establish what the design criteria was several years ago when I came up with this design and see if you guys would arrive at the same conclusion on what this product would need to be. Starting with the design criteria, I'm gonna show you a couple examples of how things were adjusted previously on our kits and basically anything else that you could buy off the market. Doesn't matter if it comes from China or not, these are bungs and threads and things, and that's how we lengthen and shorten stuff. And all of it is used everywhere. You see it on vehicles today, you see it everywhere. So for example, our first one, this is a bung, this is a heim joint. They both have a male and female thread. As I turn it, it goes shorter or goes inside as, as I turn the other way, it comes out. This is similar, um, but this is called a double adjuster. This has a external right-hand thread and internal left-hand thread. And when paired together, three pieces total, you have the ability to lengthen and shorten something while still being connected to whatever it's connected to. In this case, it's a car. So I can turn this and you can see how I can extend and retract. I do have a hex here. I don't need to turn it by hand. I can use a, a driver, but that is an example. This is probably the most commonly used. We've been using this for probably five years, give or take. And then we have these pinch bolts that tighten down so you don't need to use a jam nut on the larger thread. Um, so that is another design idea. We also have jack screws, which I don't have any, but Jack's gonna put a picture either here or just, yeah, you're gonna put a picture here. We have jack screws, ladder bars, tie rods. There's so many different ways, but none of these worked for the design criteria that I had outlined. Part of the design criteria was also, how can we remove this quickly? The problem with joints like this is that when they're connected to the car, oftentimes, for this arm specifically, there's a spring that is, goes here. There's a double shear plates that go here, and this bolt is quite difficult to remove because of where the spring is, so you may need to drop the coilover. You can't possibly back this out, so part of the design criteria was that we needed to be able to remove it quickly. We almost needed to be able to remove the control arm from the heim joint as quickly as possible. And you can see with this design, we would need to unthread this quite a bit and drive this all the way out. That way this would be still in the chassis and I could take the arm off, but realigning that and getting that back on would be almost impossible. The other was, how can we create a weldable, buildable design that also uses like minimal material, maximum strength? So that's kind of like what these are for. These feet, we have so many different makes of these that we've designed here that we can kind of make any shape and any design fit the chassis um, efficiently and cost effectively, which helps the, uh, the end user. So the second design criteria was how can we make it, what's the word, I guess, um, universally applied to any chassis. Um, another part of the design criteria was making it easy to manufacture. So manufacturing process and material has to be um, of high quality, easy machinability, and very strong, has to be very strong. Another one is it needs to be uh, reliable and good for long periods of time. So it also has to be easy to adjust, easy to remove, but reliable for a long period of time. All in all, we're writing all of these requirements down, um, minimal components as well. We want as few components as possible so that there's a less likelihood for any failure amongst those components. So as you can see on this, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, basically seven things, including each individual bowl. That's too many components when you really think of what you're tightening, what you're loosening. So we wanna minimize that. We are left with a rack of ideas and um, examples in the real world of things that have been done before, because this is not a new idea, but the way that I did use it is new. We have come up with what I showed you at the beginning of the video, and that is a smooth adjuster. The name for it, we did come up with. It's not necessarily something that's ever been made before. You can see how this adjuster is installed into each piece. And the important thing to note is that the shoulder of this adjuster is in imperial terms. I'm gonna to speak to you in imperial for a second. Uh, it's 700 thou tall, uh, meaning 
This piece of material here that I'm holding is 750 thou, three quarters of an inch. We order material here in Imperial, so that is why we are going to be talking in Imperial. If you guys are wondering why not use the metric, don't buy material in metric. So when I install these two pieces together, there is a 50 thou gap between the smooth adjuster and the foot, leaving enough room for, do we have the washer for this? Yeah. Three quarter washer, three -quarter please. Wash. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what about it? <laughs> so installing this, it leaves a clamping surface, which when tightened is going to pinch this assembly together and hold a really solid fixture to the control arm, which connects to the bearing, the heim joint, and then the heim joint is connected to the chassis. So when I assemble this together, I will show you how it is on car adjustable, but it does all of those other things in the design criteria that I explained. So we're gonna set this at a random spot. So as you can see when the jam nut's loose, this obviously is also loose. But if this was the desired length that I wanted to adjust this at, I'm gonna pretend this is on a car for a second, and I fixture it in this position, we now have a solid connection for our control arm. That is both on-car adjustable, very strong because of the material selection. This is 4140T chromoly that we machined on our lathe here. CNC machine by Dylan himself. You guys are gonna see that. It's pretty cool on the live tooling lathe. Essentially, this component has put through, has been put through its paces both for strength testing, durability, longevity. We've been making these for about three, three and a half years. If I wanted to change the length of this, especially on an alignment rack, which we did on my Corvette, you would essentially, if I wanted to make it shorter, back the jam nut off and I would turn the adjuster to the desired length and I have effectively shortened the assembly. Um, and then to do it vice versa, I would back the smooth adjuster off and then I would turn the jam nut into the control arm and fixture it that way. So that just lengthened and shortened this adjuster. Um, the reason why we make feet that look like this is because on a 350Z control arm, for example, we have to create some kind of an offset from the uh, bulk of the arm to swoop underneath of the tie rod and then come back up again and reconnect to the chassis. So these two points here and here are at the same height, but we needed to get some room for the tie rod. So this foot and the offset that we're able to create here is what gave us the ability to create that offset very structurally. You'll see that the solution to get by this design otherwise isn't going to be as strong. You need to do a bunch of extra welds or you need to do a lot of extra bends. Whereas in this case, it's a mechanical design where it locks into the control arm mechanically first. You can see around the welds here, how this foot basically wouldn't come off the arm even if the welds were not there and the welds are there to simply hold it in place. Making this a very strong connection point and giving us the offset that we needed for the control arm. So with all of that said, we have established what the design criteria was. We have made a product that is effective, easy to machine for us, easy to produce. It's cost effective to sell to you. It works extremely well, but the best thing I have yet really to describe was the first design criteria, which was removing it quickly. So on my car, on the Corvette currently, we have had to use this a couple of times because let's face it, Driftmaster's walls and things are always in the way. And uh, when you're pushing the limit on that 95% plus range, you are going to get into some stuff. So essentially when you take an impact, this is connected to the car, this is connected to the control arm, and you zap this smooth adjuster off with an impact very quickly, much faster than I'm able to spin it off. This comes off with your impact. You can take the control arm and you can simply remove it. This is left on the car in the position that you originally had it. So when you go to put a new control arm on, let's say that we damaged this control arm. We just took it off. And then when we go to throw it back on, we slap this in there because of the gap that's in here. Without the smooth adjuster, it makes aligning the heim joints really, really easy. Even if the heim joints were crooked on an angle like this, when you go to put the arm back on, you can almost get it started anyways, like that. And as soon as you start to tighten it, it'll automatically align itself as you're tightening it on both points. And by the time you get to the end, you'll be perfectly aligned on both holes and have swapped the control arm within a matter of seconds. This is something that is not possibly done with any other 
uh, adjustment design on the market. So because of that, we have created something that we are applying to everything that we create, everything that we make, and it is so simple. Oftentimes the simplest products require the most thought, and if something looks easy, it means someone put a bunch of time in it to make it seem that way. So although we've created a lot of products like that, especially like our 350Z diff brace and things that seem easy, it's because we went through several different designs to get to this point. But the design concept isn't new. To adjust something where it's not engaging with the control arm, it's able to spin freely, that is not a new concept. So I'm not saying that this is reinventing the wheel, but the way that we've been able to bring it into manufacturing process and use it on so many different applications, especially like the uh, smooth adjuster on the, the uh, lollipop adjustment for the BMWs. We were able to make a smooth adjuster application apply to a chassis that can be used on any kit, doesn't matter if it's ours or not, and give everyone the ability to on-car adjustable their caster with the BMW kits. So this is a great example of that. That's the E46 Lollipop bolts to the chassis, and we are able to do the exact same thing that I explained, plus or minus a very large range. There's actually no difference between the adjustment range of this smooth adjuster and the adjustment range of an actually threaded bung. So the difference is huge. The improvements are always necessary to continue to improve. And as always, thank you guys for always watching, supporting, buying, and running our products. And we'll see you guys on the next video.